I wanted to start off the video with some GPS accuracy and that's why you see me walking back and forth, back and forth across that bridge. One, it's straight and two, it was nice and convenient location. Now we can take a look at the screen of this really cool thing. Now when you first go to the Coros website, you know, Coros.com, you just click on Training Hub in the top right. It's going to have you log in and then you have access to all of your stats. You have your running fitness, you have recent activities, and you can go to a calendar and go back in time. We're going to go back to this walking workout and then in the top right you can see the map and then I can expand that map. You can click on lap. It shows you your best lap, your average cadence. You can do distance versus time. You can do custom chart with, we can add heart rate in there, and then we can add cadence, stride length. So if you're running or cycling, that can be really useful. Then as I move my cursor over, you can see where I am on the map, which is really cool. So now we'll expand the map, and then I will show you the route. So if you notice, I'm not in the river and there's just a few little, there's a few sections where it deviates off the Provo River Trail, which is natural. But then right here on the bridge, if we zoom in, you can see I was going back and forth, back and forth. I think it's pretty detailed. Now we can compare that to Garmin by going to Garmin Connect. So when you go to Garmin.com, you just scroll on down and click Garmin Connect. It's of course gonna have you log in, right? And then we can do the same. We can go back in time, or we can just go to the calendar and quickly browse to that day. So this is gonna be the 13th of February. View details, and it takes me to the details of that event. I can click play. I can also do, um, various activities where I see how I'm scrolling across the pace and elevation of heart rate and it shows me where I am on the course. I can even click play right there and zoom in and zoom out and it shows me my route. So I'm going to zoom in even more. There we go. So if we compare that to the Koros hub, pretty similar right along that bridge. So that white line is the bridge that I was on. Really close. So again, we're comparing the Koros Vertex 2 to the accuracy of the Garmin Epix 2. This one goes for about 600 and again, 600 to 700. So about the same price range for, the, for these watches. And then if we go back out, you can see even Garmin deviates a little bit from the trail, just like Koros. And I've tested other watches on the same trail as well. And you can see even an $800 watch or a $600 watch is gonna deviate just a little bit. So what do you think? Was that a good GPS accuracy test? I think so. I wonder if I, oh, man, I gotta be careful of those copyright strikes. I wonder if I can do a health checkup while driving on my Coros Vertex. Oh, I could feel it doing a little heartbeat thing. It's hard to see. I am wearing polarized sunglasses. A okay, time of test, 15.03. That's a really big truck. This would be a lot easier in a self-driving car like a Tesla or a Volvo or I think Volkswagen does it. I think Volkswagen. Yeah. GMC, Ford. Who doesn't have a self-driving car these days? Well, one thing's for sure, it's probably going to give me SBO2 air. I've been getting that air a lot on this Chorus Vertex 2. What, do, what does that say? I can't read it. Well, we'll check the stats when we get home. So far, I like it. It's a good watch. With watches like these, you know, just like other 
larger watches, whether it's a Garmin, Casio G-Shock, maybe an Invicta. You know, you have to like big watches, because as you can tell, it is, it is big on the wrist. <laughs> and when you go running, even, uh, even on my walk today, well, I've had two different walks today, it really does move when you're moving around. The watch just kind of wiggles back and forth on my wrist, more so than my Epix 2. It, it really feels a lot like the Garmin Phoenix 7X Pro, or the 7X, or the 6X Sapphire Solar. They've all been about the same size. All right, that's it for now. The audio is not that good when I'm in the car, so end of recording. Just try it again, and yep, failed. Please keep still, adjust wearing position, and try, try again. It doesn't like to be, well, the watch doesn't like to give a health checkup while in a car driving. That's too bad. Then again, most watches don't. They want you to be just perfectly still. So nothing like in the, uh, sorry. I forget to turn down the music because copyright strikes, blah, blah, blah. So a nice little trip to Costco and the way I tracked my heart rate for Koros was the same way I did it during my lunch break walk. Oh, and it came off. <laughs> I just uh, had this, the Koros heart rate monitor. See how the little blinky lights? And then it automatically connects to the Vertex, which is right on my belt loop. Heart rate 108? Now it says heart rate 92 on the wrist. There we go, heart rate coming down, 101, 89. Little spike there, that's all. Anyway, I thought that, <laughs> I thought by having this strap on my forearm, I could keep my uh, Apple Watch up higher, but it was, it's not so tight that it keeps, yeah, this is heavy and it moved it down. Anyway, I've never tried wearing my Apple Watch up that high, but the test was between Garmin and Samsung and just for fun around the waist, the Vertex, because I'm just fascinated by a watch that attaches to a carabiner. It's for climbing, not, not grocery shopping at Costco, but still the same. It's just really fun. And I love how seamless it is to connect to, of course, the Coros heart rate monitor. It connects pretty easily to other heart rate monitors as well, but with its own, yeah. So let's drive home. And actually, while we're just in the car, let's see what the stats are. Because a lot of times I get home and then I never finish the video. So we'll just do it right now. Watch number one, we have the Garmin Epix. So 405 steps while grocery shopping at Costco. And while we're looking at the stats in the Samsung, we'll do a fun recovery. Strangely enough, Samsung only 195 steps. That's pretty low. How far did I go? I don't, I don't know, Samsung. I told you I was doing a treadmill workout. I would say 0.2 miles, sure. Confirm. Or 0.2 kilometers, heart rate, all right. Oh, and I can choose right there, calibrate distance. Again, interesting. Well, that's cool that they give you that option. 100 cal 111 calories in just 26 minutes at Costco? Wow, you know what that means. I need to go to Costco more often. That's what that means. Oh, still measuring. So let's switch to Koros. So it locks the screen automatically when you're doing workouts, has the time of day, my heart rate. Fun enough, no steps on the treadmill workout. Low HR, yes, I know, that's why I'm stopping the workout. And finish. 0 0.088 kilometers recorded? Okay. Uh, I don't think it was that much. I'm going to say 0.28 and saved. 
how many calories, RPE, average pace, max HR 112, average 90, 70 calories. Yeah, 70 sounds more like it. Recovery time, almost an hour. So now if I scroll down here, yeah. <laughs> One hour to recover from shopping at Costco for 30 minutes. Mentally, I would say, yes, it is going to take me about an hour to recover from entering the Costco. Garmin, yes, I agree. Recovery, zero hours. And saving. See how it changed from green to orange? That's just fun. So it should auto-scroll. Come on. Scroll, there we go. So over pace, non-existent because I was moving slowly. Average heart rate, max heart rate. So for some reason, Kuros gave me that spike. There's the heart rate zones. And power, not much power while shopping. Okay, next screen, retire that, come on. Training effect. Not much. Training status, 131. Recovery, zero hours. I agree with Garmin and Samsung. No recovery needed. And it doesn't have the steps after you leave the workout. Is anyone else bothered by that? Is it just me? I mean, you're doing treadmill. There's distance. There's heart rate. But there's no steps. And for walking and hiking, no steps. But it shows it on the watch, just not in the post-workout log. That does... That does not compute to my brain. Comment below if that bothers you, please. So how fast did the Koros watch charge? Ooh, it actually charged, it finished just a bit ago at 2020, 100%. It doesn't get hot while charging. 20 degrees, room temp, 16, four degrees Celsius above room temp. And now if we unplug it and go to the battery manager, 54 days, estimated GPS use, 90 hours. That's that's pretty impressive. Now, if I go to settings and I go to system, go to accessories, connect now. I want to see if it will tell me the percentage of the heart rate monitor, which I also started charging uh, about an hour ago. It should be fully charged and Connected. Oh, it's at 89%. Well, I cannot read that without my specs on. 99%? I still can't read it. Ah, 99. So we want to disconnect that. I like that's magnetic. So now we have this charge, this charge, and I can go do my running workout. That is wicked cool. I wonder what else we could turn on because I thought it would, yeah, 53 days. That's pretty good. That's good enough for me. Almost two months. I bet the Vertex 3, when it comes out by Koros, I bet they can get the battery life to last a full two months. That would be epic. All right. Now, which one of these watches am I going to take off to put the Koros back on? Decisions. Decisions. We don't need that. Don't need this one. This actually, we do need this one. Ah, yes. This is the lava band, by the way. And one of my favorite new features on the Koros is this right here, measuring heart rate. I don't know if my microphone is going to pick it up, but it, yeah, there's, there's haptic feedback. So if I take my fingers off and I put the penny on there, now you can't hear the Penny bouncing, but there is haptic feedback, trust me. Well, that's kind of fun, you can slide the penny around while you're measuring your heart rate. Find a penny, pick it up, and all day you'll have good luck. Keep still, okay, sorry Koros. 
77, HRV 32, stress 45, breathing 14, SpO2 97. Getting lots of notifications. Let's turn these off. Now we'll do it on here. That's what I like about the OnePlus Silent. This is the Garmin Forerunner 955 Solar. Came out almost two years ago, but it's new to my world. Okay, I need to calm down. This one does not provide haptic feedback or any fun animation. I mean, it shows you your stats. Why am I so stressed? Is it because I'm filming a video? I just don't know. Do, 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 do. On Waikiki Beach, the sun is shining, life is good, just me and my favorite person in the world, you know, that one special lady in my life. Initials are S8. Shh, be still. Alright, pretty close. Pretty close. I don't know if there's a way to look up the HRV stats on the watch. You have to do it on the phone. Those are pretty close. Close enough. I just keep walking and walking and walking. <sighs> Outdoor visibility of a Coros watch. I mean, it's it's backlit, sidelit, whatever you want to call it. It's well, oh, oh can you, could you read that? How about now? Can you read that? That's pretty good. I mean, there's that street light, but even if we get away from the street light, and I zoom out in widescreen, so I have a crappy camera. Oh yeah, that's good vis visibility. And again, this is the Vertex 2. Soon it will be well over two years old. And there's the outdoor visibility of the Coros Pace 3. Huh, step count's pretty close. 19,922, 19,854, which makes sense. This has been on my left wrist pretty much all day for a while. It was in uh, my pocket. And this mostly on my right wrist or on my right pocket. And I'm right-handed. Now the downside to that backlight is <laughs> it does not coordinate with DND &D or your sleep mode. So at night, let me just show you. Now we're back in the bedroom. You know, I, I don't let too many people in bedroom, so consider yourself very, very lucky. And it's nighttime, right? So I'm going to turn the lights down really low, in fact, off. And now you move your arm in the middle of the night and that happens. And you can't adjust the brightness. And the same thing happens to the Pace 3. See how bright that is? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't like, I mean, and sometimes it doesn't come on, like right now. Ah, oh, there we go. Luckily, the raise to wake in certain movements while you're sleeping doesn't quite trigger the backlight, which is a good thing, but I've had it come on too many times. So what I have to do is either just deal with it, or sometimes if I'm really tired, I just don't care, and I'll pull my blanket over me, you know, like this, and just cover up the watch faces, and then I don't have, then I don't have to worry about it, but it's just, it's bothersome, and they just did a huge upgrade, upgrade to the Coros Pace 3 and to the Vertex 2, and I believe also to the Apex 2 Pro and the Apex 2. Now, I haven't tested those, but on the Coros Pace 3 and the Vertex 2, the raise to wake thing is still an issue. Let's go back to the studio. Even though it is 22.15, I'm not quite ready to go to bed. Now, luckily it is a quick fix. Long press, go into your toolbox wheel. But even if I just put on do not disturb on, 
that backlight still comes on. So you have to go to system, backlight instead of all day or sunset to sunrise, you just have to choose off. They need another option where it just follow do not disturb or follow bedtime mode or anyway, it's kind of a bummer. And that's the same on the Pace 3, it's the same exact settings. You either have all day off or sunrise, sunset. You can also just uh, click on the digital dial and go to system, more settings, gesture backlight auto. So I have it on sunset to sunrise and I just have to turn it to off. And that way it's not gonna wake me up during the night. The other downside is both of these watches, they have no brightness setting. So maybe that will bother you, maybe not. Overall, you know, it's a tough call. I actually like the size of the screen, but when I'm running, this is so much more comfortable to wear. And then, I mean, the battery life is beyond comparison. This is at 70%, I have 33 days. This one's at 61%, I have 10 days. This one is $230. This one still retails for around 600. This one is on loan from Coros. I have to send it back on Monday, unfortunately. But this one's mine to keep. There are also some rumors about the Apex 3 and Apex 3 Pro, and I really, really, really hope <laughs> that Koros uh, chooses my channel to review that watch and then let me keep it like they did with the Koros Pace 3. But hey, I don't mind loaner watches at all. In fact, you know, Garmin, Samsung, what's the other one? Uh, Mavoy, if you want to loan me some watches to review for 30 days, that, that's long enough. In the past, I, I would buy watches and then return them within the two week window. And uh, luckily over time as the channel has grown and more people have found my business cards and subscribed, the ad revenue has increased. So thank you to viewers like you for increasing the ad revenue so I can buy watches and keep them. Which one do I recommend? I'll answer that in just a few minutes. So back on January 30th, I made my list of pros and cons. Number one, and this, this goes for both watches, Coros in general, you get a two-year warranty. Now be advised, if you buy open box, right now it's a one-year warranty. Number two, on the Vertex, sapphire screen. On the Coros, it's pretty durable. It's not sapphire, but if you look really closely, no scratches yet on mine, and I've had it almost four months, and I've worn it almost every day, and I've had my kids wear it, and still no scratches. Haven't gotten mountain climbing with it. Number three, wicked accurate GPS, and since this is newer, I would say, even though these are a different class of watches, they're about the same, and sometimes I, I need to do just a few more tests and hopefully I, I get it, time to do that tomorrow. I want to walk around a track and I want to say the Pace 3 gives the Vertex run for its money. Number four, Strava integration. Again, both. Number five, customized workouts. Number six, workout en export into Garmin or Vice Versa. So if there's all these different formats that you can just import directly into the Koros app. Number seven, long, long battery life, which we just went over. It, it's so nice. If you've ever had an Apple Watch, oh man, going to Koros is just a, a breath of fresh air. That's what it is. Number eight, same charger as other Koros timepieces, which I just had that. So this is the charger that came with the Vertex, and you can see there's one, two, three pins in there, and it fits both watches and this was the same charger that that I've had uh, with the Apex 2 Pro and the Apex 2 which is nice and they also have that cool folding keychain charger which is really cool. USB-A connects to a PC which is really nice. That's number nine. Number 10, screen. Easy to read indoors and outdoors at night. Direct sunlight. As you saw whether you're in bed or you're at the office or you're in pitch black outside, 
that backlight is gorgeous and plenty bright enough. Number 11, customizable watch faces. Very nice. Number 12, a plethora of free watch faces. Huge pro. Number 14, browser training hub, which I showed in the beginning of the video. And again, that's that's free. You don't have to pay extra for that. Number 15, got maps. Yes, the maps feature on here is really, really good. I think I've already shown that in another video. Number 16, at the beginning of a workout, the watch informs the user of the battered life estimate. No math needed. And that is just awesome. Number 17, backlight at night, bright enough to use as a wrist torch. <laughs> you just turn that on either the Vertex or the Coros, and it's like, uh, or the Pace 3, it's just like, and you can see. It's not a true torch. It's It's not going to be as bright as, you know, a light on a smartphone, of course, but still impressive, very impressive. And I'd be curious to see if Coros goes that route like Garmin and a few others where they give a torch. I have one that has a torch, the uh, Instinct 2X, but that's on loan to my friend Pete. And I would say number 18 is that you're able to view the number of GPS satellites. So a lot of watches, they say, I'm going to do the GPS signal verification. Uh, that's just not the best handwriting. See, right there. I wrote it down. I'll show you on the vertex first. So you just long press on back, and then you just scroll, 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 map. This is the cool map. And it takes a second, and then I can, oops, oops. And I can just scroll out or scroll in for zooming. And as soon as it gets satellite, look at that detail of the city. That's pretty cool. And then there's touch control on both. It's really good. It's a lot faster outside. And then, of course, you can exit satellite signal. Look at all those satellites. And that's indoors. I was trying this earlier when I was at the mall. And I was impressed how quickly it got a satellite signal. I'll do this in real time. Wow, that was that didn't take long at all. Isn't that just much better than just a satellite? Oh yeah, you have three bars, four bars. No, it shows you how many satellites it's communicating with. Fascinating. I love it. And of course, yeah, this might zap a little battery. So we'll exit. This one, I think it might have breadcrumb, tra breadcrumb trails, but eh, the cons. Where's the app store? There's there's no app store on either of these watches, which is kind of a bummer. There's no hourly chime. Music controls, eh. Tone options, you, you get one tone and that's it. So when you start a workout, that that's that's the only tone you get. And you also, there's no volume. Sleep window should disable the light raised to wake. We talked about that. Theater mode, there isn't one. Airplane mode, not there. Flights of stairs, well, <laughs> so we'll do, oh, there's no finish later on this one. So if we scroll up, 13 flights of stairs, all right. Now, to its defense, Apple also has a hard time counting stairs. They all make mistakes. But hey, kind of cool that it both counted 13, so when it is counting them, it's somewhat accurate. Now if we compare that to this Garmin, just for kicks, 25. And I feel that's more accurate. But as far as step count, I feel that it's pretty good. Day in, day out, it's usually lower than my Garmin watches. So 23,000. I also really like, notice how the backlight is not coming on until I press it. That's a really nice feature. And when you do press it, it stays on during navigation. So it's about 3,000 off. And it doesn't matter if I wear left or right, it's always off by a good 10 to 15%. Number nine, there's no large font. 10, no high contrast. 11, volume control. 12, yes, they both have vibration, not really haptic feedback, just a vibrate, a simple vibration motor like the Garmin watches, not anything like 
Apple or a Mazfit actually has some really cool vibration. Number 13, light alerts, doesn't have that. Number 14, not really a flashlight widget, but the backlight is pretty bright. Now, notice that this one has a dedicated light button. The Pace 3 does not, so all you have to do is, you can either, depending where you are on the navigation, you can either just turn the digital dial and the backlight comes on. And you can, you can also, when you're on the watch face, if you just press the back button, you have an interactive watch face and that's gonna turn on with the backlight as well. Timeout setting for backlight, you can't control that. Brightness setting, no setting. 17, there's no auto brightness and neither of the Chorus watches that we're talking about has a backlight uh, auto brightness sensor. Leaderboard doesn't have it. Number 20, ability to share my workouts. Eh, you can't really do that like you can with Fitbit and Garmin. You can export the whole workout, so that's kind of cool. No option to edit my Chorus track sleep. So if you miss a night, you can't go in and add it. So if I go here to my main board, okay, sleep. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot to wear it to bed last night. There's, you can't modify it. Okay, so we go to here, and I can't even modify the nights that I did wear it. You can't reduce your sleep window. You can't increase your sleep window. Samsung, Fitbit, Garmin, a lot of other watches, uh, Amazfit, all allow you to do that. So of course. Please add that to the app. Lack of nap tracking is just not there. 23, heart rate off. You can either do always or you can do real time and that's it. So to edit that, you just long press, go into system, sensors, optical HR. You can turn it on and off for activity, which is good. Daily HR, it's either real time or 10 minutes. You, you don't have an option. And 24, D&D &D mode, why doesn't, or why can't this mode automatically mute the tones? So even though this is in do not disturb mode, okay, do not disturb is on, great. It still beeps, because we just saw that in the workout starting. Number 25, D&D &D mode does, does not display on the watch face. It depends which watch face. Number 26, resume later, why isn't it in all workouts? I don't know why, but it's not, and sometimes that bugs me. And that's it. So 26 cons and 18 pros. Maybe I should have given more pros. I think we went over our... <laughs> I was really, really shooting for 11 minutes, but I want to talk about both watches and give a follow-up on the Vertex. I really like the Vertex. Uh, I've actually received a ton of compliments on it. I'm going to release a separate video on how it interacts and just the whole thing with the carabiner. I really like the quick release bands. This one has, you can do quick release on it, but for running, when you're really running fast, this one really moves on your wrist. If you've had a Phoenix or a large Casio, you'll find that to be true as well. Where this one, whether it's on my right or my left wrist, it uh, it just stays so stationary, and especially with that Velcro band, you can get it just right. So that's really nice. And this one, yeah, you could buy a Velcro band, and then you could adjust it. I actually have grown to really like this lava-colored band. Some people might call it pumpkin spice. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you'll feel it jiggle. Me, yeah. Tough call. I recommend the Pace 3 because one, it's lighter. Two, it's more comfortable to wear. Three, even though the battery is smaller, it will still easily last you a full week with tons of notifications. No, you can't say, hey robot, what's the weather? But it does display the weather right on there. It has always on display. You can read your text messages. You can read your alerts, your tweets. Sure, you can't reply, but we have these awesome smartphones. And to be honest, even when I had my Apple Watch Ultra 2, it's such a small screen, it's navigation. It's, uh, and that's why I no longer have my Apple Watch Ultra. And I gave my Apple Watch, is it the 6? 
seven. Yeah, I gave that to my son. I decided to leave the Apple ecosystem. Well, I mean, I still have my iPhone. I'm filming on the iPhone 15 Pro right now, but I just I needed one less watch in my life because tonight I'm going to bed with four. Yeah, and I just needed, uh, yeah. Uh, the Sapphire screen is a huge perk. I would love for a lot of watch manufacturers, including, including Koros, to give you an option like, hey, the standard Koros Pace 3 is $229 plus tax. If you'd like to upgrade to a Sapphire screen, $25 extra, boom, take my money. I, I would do that for a lot of the watches that I buy because I do not like using screen protectors. Uh, I have the stock screen protector on my OnePlus uh, 12 phone here, and uh, when that screen protector falls off, I don't know if I'll get another one. The interface, I would say this is another Pro. So this would be Pro number 19. The interface is really easy to use, and I think you'll find that it's quite intuitive. It's easier to use than Garmin. Another Pro is, yeah, you know, I have, I have more. Pro number 20, wellness check. They have the wellness check, and they have that with a Maz Fit. They have the health snapshot with Garmin. Love that feature so much. They're also now monitoring stress. So this is number 21. I find the stress to be quite useful, better than Samsung, in fact, because there's a numeric value. So for example, today, my average stress is 55. All right. And then if I go for the whole week, 44. And then I've measured both of these, and they're within just, just digits of each other, which is very reassuring that both watches. Again, always on display. Okay, that's 22. Love always on display. It's just, even with this, I mean, I have, it's the studio is pretty well lit, and I can easily just glance down, and I don't need that backup popping up. Well, it's good because I turned it off. And then with the backlight, just quick press, or you just click the back button on the Pace 3. It just lights up the screen. It's really crisp. And that outdoor visibility is mwah, perfect. A slight thing that just bugs me a wee bit, there's no sleep score. It's not a prong, a prong. <laughs> it's not a con. It's not a pro either. I imagine they'll add a sleep score soon. Uh, all in all, they've what, been giving sleep feedback for a good almost three years. I'm sure they'll figure it out, but maybe you don't care about a sleep score. The sleep details all in all are pretty cool, and I like how you can just even go for a whole year and get that feedback. That's pretty sweet. I like that. I like a lot. Do I recommend buying a Koros over a Garmin? For 229 you cannot get a Forerunner. You can't get an Epix. I don't even think you can get a VivoActive five so that price point and at first i thought oh that screen is so small no not so much so i'm very happy that i get to keep this one even though i have enjoyed going three weeks in between the charge that that's just amazing i mean right out of the box the vertex lasted me was it 17 days yeah day nine the battery is at 49 percent and I still had 16 days left. Wow, yeah. So out of the box, I didn't have to charge it for over two, two weeks and I was using GPS like crazy. The other big difference between this one, this one has this kind of fun feature called Ultramax and in runs, hiking, and a few other workouts, you can do Ultramax and it saves the battery and limits the amount of GPS pings. Uh, and some other watches kind of have that same feature, which is, you know, here nor there. It's kind of neat. I don't really miss it that much that it doesn't have it on here. Another strange thing is when you're doing the, and this is the difference, when you do the wellness check on the Coros Pace 3, you don't have to touch it. You just have to sit still. Whereas on... <laughs> The vertex, you have to touch the bezel and stay still. So if I just don't do anything. See how it's yawning, Melroy? Touch the bezel. 
I get that a lot. The SpO2 signal is weak. So 71, 18 HRV, I'm tired. Stress, low. Breathing, 16, 72, 20. Hmm, stress a lot lower. Breathing, 15, SpO2, 98. So I imagine if I did this again, I bet I can get a valid SpO2. Okay, no talking, no moving. That uh, gold ring on my index finger, yes, that is new. That is bionic gold, and it's my ultra-human ring air. And the silver ring is my Aura Ring 3.0, or Aura Ring Gen 3 from Finland on my right. Oh, whoops, left. <laughs> On my left index finger, the matte black, uh, also an ultra human ring air. I like the little measuring thing. It takes about 30 seconds or so. Hmm. SpO2 signal weak. Yeah, this one doesn't give me, and I just cleaned the sensor too. Maybe I'm not supposed to talk. You know what could also help? When in doubt, shut down the watch. And whenever you power off a watch or, well, I don't know of any rings that you can power off. <laughs> I'd like to leave them off for a good minute or two, just let them rest. And very often when I go to sleep, I put my watches in airplane mode and that's why I made a big stink over neither of these having a uh, airplane mode. Um, I put this one in airplane mode, this one in airplane mode. I just turn my phones off completely. In fact, you know, I'm just going to do that right now. And power off. Good night, OnePlus. It's, it's really good for the phones and really good for the watches. Okay, it's been a good minute. Let me show you the cool Boodoo animation. Yeah. Kind of a pet peeve. Neither of these have really good goal animations. You just get, like, get a quick vibration goal. If you double or triple your goal, there are no other animations. The touch control on both of these, the, the Pace 3 and the Vertex, it's okay. I prefer using the digital dial uh, and the button. I'm actually quite impressed that both of these watches allow you to navigate with just the digital dial, which is also a button, and the back. I mean, it's it's a real, it's a really cool, intuitive way to navigate uh, the watch interface. Update. Okay, we'll do this at the same time, or not. Oh, so this one is the back button. So, not much of an animation, but it does boot up very quickly, and there's a vibration. So now, let's try that. I know what you're thinking. Maybe I should have taken off the rings. Maybe they're interfering. They're causing crosstalk. Who knows? There we go. 98%, less stress, HRV. 35, I'll take it. My highest ever is 80. See right there, I wish I could have kept that backlight on a little longer. All right, I'm happy with that. So there's the stress data right on the watch. Right there, I took it off for a while. You can see spikes throughout the day, pretty cool. That's the temperature. Very detailed, and look how easy that is to read. Gorgeous, ooh, more snow. Wear your watch to sleep to record HRV. Please connect to the Coros app. Okay, interesting. Oh yeah, I turned the phone off so it's not connected anymore. And this is the weather. Eight hours and nine minutes till sunrise. Altitude, I have found that to be quite accurate. Resuming, this is my intensity trend. Base fitness, really cool details. Training load, intensity week distribution, very nice. And they're matching up between the pace three. My running fitness, my race predictor, love that. Workouts floors, my heart rate, so you can scroll throughout the entire day and see what your heart rate's doing. Then it gives you a glance as well. And I'm fully recovered. Sometimes the recovery info is a little too picky, but you know what? Most, a lot of people overtrain, so it's, I like it when it tells me to rest for two hours or five hours. Yeah. I'm gonna miss the vertex too, but the pace three will keep me company.
As always, if you agree or disagree with any of my pros or cons, well, it's a free country. <laughs> and uh, pithy comments are welcome below. Please no swearing. My kids and my family and my friends watch these videos and, you know, let's just be. There's enough swearing in the world. We don't need it on my YouTube channel as well. I don't think I've ever sworn on my channel. I mean, I've talked about my damn penny from Hoover Dam, but that, that's totally different. I will see you again soon with another review. Pro number 25, the packaging that comes with this watch is awesome. If you're a collector and when you're storing your watch, this is what you get? Oh yeah. So let's, let's you know, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> the Kuros team, pat yourselves on the back, whoever came up with this idea, because it's, it's amazing. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I will see you sometime in the next 88 hours, maybe sooner. And yes, let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. Goodbye. Yeah, it's the, the four pin thing. Oh, there it is. No. Dang, Nabbit, where'd it go? You know, you set things out and you're all ready for the video and then something happens. I like how quickly the Koros Vertex detects GPS and detects accessories. So in just a minute, it's gonna know that I'm wearing the heart rate sensor on my wrist. And there we go, just like that. Click start. Luckily I am outside, so it is easy to get a GPS signal. And a really cool feature on this device, and also other Coros watches, is you can go into your little toolbox here and view the number of satellites you're connected to. So just click on satellite signal, and this is definitely helpful when you are outdoors. So this is the carabiner feature. 
or carabiner accessory that I've been testing for a couple weeks and it is really cool. I like it a lot because it enables me to wear other watches and still test this one. Oh, I need to start that workout. So there we go, tons of satellites all within my reach. Then you click back and now you're in your workout. So when you're wearing the watch, it shows you two heart rates, the wrist heart rate versus the heart rate uh, from the sensor, which is around my right forearm. Here, I'll show you. So there's the uh, Koros heart rate sensor right there on my arm, and it's blinking. If I had a tripod, I'd show you the orange lights. Not orange. <laughs> this is the orange band, but the green lights. Trust me, they're there. And then this just easily attaches right on my belt loop. Or if you're mountain climbing, you could attach it on a backpack.